What's up, you guys? Welcome to Dark Avenger Inc. Plus. This is Jay Al Ghul coming at you with another in depth review. And this week I only have one, so that's a huge change. Really light load this week, only a few comics came out. And, um, I have the pleasure of doing an in depth review on Green Lantern Corps Annual Number One. Let's start this review where I always start, and let's check out that cover. That's a pretty awesome cover. Now this is an annual, so you know you have to shell out ten bucks to get this bad boy. There were um, a couple annuals out this week, actually. This and Batman and Robin. I just couldn't get Batman and Robin. There was no way I was gonna spend twenty bucks on just two DC annuals plus the other DC book I got and the two Marvels. Nah, man, no way. So I just had to get this one, especially since this is the conclusion of the Rise of the Third Army event. Now let me get into this, tell you what I thought about this book, and then I'll also tell you what I think about Rise of the Third Army, how it was as an event. Alright, so basically this continues right after the end of Green Lantern Corps issue number 16, and Baz, Beige, and Guy are on the moon. Um, Baz is playing um, the message that Hallens and Nestor left in the ring. And Guy is like, holy crap. I knew something was wrong with those blue bastards. I played right into their hands. Well, you know what? It's payback time. Huh? And so Guy, ba Beige, and Baz are about to head to Oa, and then they hear a message broadcast by the Guardians telling all, warning all Landers about the supposed alien creatures that are um, attacking sentient life throughout the universe, and they're saying that they have an inoculation to make them immune. But we all know it's a trap. Um, lure all the guard on um, the rest of the lanterns to Oa. Some of them get captured and immobilized. Um, but then um here comes Guy, Beige, and Badge to the rescue, along with the help of Kilowog and some of the other Green Lanterns. Kilowog managed to go off the grid and stop um some of the lanterns before the Guardians got to him. And so, you know, we have our own little army here. They have at it with the Guardians. It's pretty awesome. Um, looks like they're about to go down. The guy is falling. The face, the construct base made him during the fight to help him fight. He's fading. He's falling. But then, whoosh, the cavalry arrives. With, none other, with the White Lantern himself, of course, my boy. Kyle Rayner, and you know, Kyle just lays down the law on the Guardians for a while, and then the Guardians are just like, oh shit, and Guy Gardner's like, payback's a bitch, you blue bastards, and that's like, direct from Guy Gardner. Oh man, it was just, it was really good, dialogue was nice. I like the interaction with all the lanterns. You get to, um, the red lanterns even come in, and uh, they basically. I don't read the red lanterns, so I'm assuming uh, Atrocitus was able to reprogram the manhunters to actually attack the guardians, which is pretty cool. So, you know, they think, you know, with all of this help and plus the power of the white lantern. They had the Guardians on the ropes, and now the Guardians are trying to draw more power from the First Lantern because they need an immense amount of energy to take, you know, this massive force down. But then the First Lantern breaks free, and basically now he says, "Your corpse, your Manhunters, your everything, everything you created will now be destroyed, Guardians, and the universe will once again be mine." Whoa. 
reference the evil laugh was in there. I just said to add that in an effect. <laughs> okay, but this was an awesome book. It was great. It was paced really well. The art was nice. The action was good. Nothing too over the top, but nothing like, eh, that shouldn't have happened. But it was really good. I'm, I'm liking it. I liked it, uh, that, um, that all the lanterns were working together. I might not be reading Red Lanterns, but the fact that Atrocities reprogrammed the Manhunters, that was friggin' awesome. I dropped Red Lanterns after the first four issues, but I think, I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, if I clear some room on my pull list, I might pick up Red Lanterns. Probably not, though, because I'm already getting three Lantern books. I'm already overloading myself with, uh, three bat titles. No. Actually, I'm like, I have like five bat titles, so I'm not gonna overload myself on multiple franchise titles. I'm just gonna get three Green Lantern titles. Sorry, Red Lantern. You look cool, and I wish I could read you, but I just don't have the room. Yeah, but this, it was just awesome. It was great. Definitely worth the five bucks. I was really skeptical, too, because the uh, New Guardians Annual... As you guys know, because I did review it on here, um, I try not to badmouth or talk negative about comics, but I'm also not one to hold back my opinion. And the New Guardians Annual was a steaming pile of shit. Oh my god, it was a waste. And I was like, please don't be a waste. Please don't be a waste. When I got this, downloaded it, got it digitally, you know, paid. And I was like, alright, let's read this. And I was just like, by the end, I'm like, damn, alright, let's get to the next part, Wrath of the First Lantern, let's go, let's go. Whew, I was actually really excited, this was really good, nice ending. Alright, so, now we get to the part of the review, where I talk about my overall thoughts of Rise of the Third Army as an event. It was a very solid event, it was nothing like... Blackest Night level, or even, you know, Green Lantern Rebirth. I mean, this was good, but it wasn't like, whoa. So, I mean, there were moments that should have been whoa, but the way they were handled, it wasn't really whoa. Okay, let me explain. Um, Green Lantern New Guardians, for example. Kyle Rayner gets his own series. I'm excited. Kyle is my favorite Green Lantern. Kyle was the Green Lantern when I started reading Green Lantern books. So I'm like, damn, oh yeah. And you know, now he's a White Lantern. That's freaking awesome. I should be way more excited about this. But, it was so predictable, you saw it coming from about issue 2. And it's just like, especially like last issue of New Guardians, I was like, oh he got shot. He's about to go White Lantern. He's talking. He's been talking about love this entire time. He's uh, obviously grasped the concept. He's about to die. He's gonna activate the Green Lantern. The White Lantern power be awesome, and then Gargant it away. And lo and behold, that's what happens. So yeah, there are moments that should have been well that weren't really rolled. So a really good thing about this um, Third Army thing, though, it introduced a really interesting character in Simon Boz. Um, granted at first I was like, okay, really? You got Jon Stewart, Guy Gardner, Hal Jordan, and Kyle Rayner. That's four already. Five, you know, five Earth Lanterns. Really? But then I'm like, I actually, re you know, read the issues, and Boss is growing on me. He's a really interesting character. I mean, he's brought something new to the table. He can do something that no other Green Lantern has ever done before. And you know, he brought his friend out of the coma. That was really cool. Um, you know, I feel like every Earth Lantern has something unique. Hal Jordan apparently has like, is like the greatest Green Lantern ever. I mean, no arguing there. But uh, and uh, how, has an incredible ability to overcome fear. Guy, he 
may be reckless, he may be a hothead, but he's always, you know, the one to have your back. You know, and he's always the one to never give up on his core or his people. So that's, you know, something God has. John Stewart, you know, being an um, architect with this immense amount of willpower, he just has some really cool stuff to bring to the table. Also, John has really not been played up as well as in the comics. Um, as in, like, other mediums, like, in the Justice League animated series. Because I remember thinking, that, like, oh my god, John is the shit. And then, like, reading him in the comics, I'm like, okay, this is kind of definitely weird. But, yeah, I like John, too. And, you know, now Baz, he has something unique and very interesting. So that was a very good thing that they brought in here. Um... Finally getting rid of the Guardians. Well, I doubt that they're actually going to get rid of the Guardians. Um, bringing that possibility in is very interesting. Throwing in the Book of Black. And the whole Black Lantern stuff again. Really cool. Obviously, you know, Jeff Johns is trying to build off of, you know, his, um, his greatest work. Which was Black Knight. And make more. But, um, I don't know. I want to see it at the same time. I hope that he does something different and it's just not Blackest Night again. Because while Blackest Night was amazing, phenomenal, it's still relatively new. And so, like, unless you do something different, like, to be like, just give us that wow factor. I just don't think that you should do like a whole Black Lantern driving back up again. Although Hal Jordan being a Black Lantern does sound very interesting. So all in all, I like Rise of the Third Army as an event. It's very solid, very good, and an awesome conclusion in this book. Um, before I give it my rating, let me go ahead and show the interior art. The interior art is really good in this. I really enjoyed this book. Like I said, the action was really nice. I like the interaction between all the different lanterns. Um, Kyle was a boss. Um, this was just really good. My only complaint was it read a little quick. But it does leave me wanting more. So, that's all I can ask for from a good comic. But because of the little bit of the pacing, um, like quick, quick pacing towards the end, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Still a really good book. Worth the 10 bucks you got to shell out. But it's definitely good. Definitely way, way better than the New Guardians Annual. Um, if you're reading Rise of the Third Army or are a Green Lantern fan, and miss this event but want to jump on before the next one, The Wrath of the First Lantern, I highly recommend you pick this up. Alright guys, that's it for my review. This is J.L. Ghoul for Dark Avenger Inc. Plus, signing off, and remember, once a comic geek, always a comic geek. Alright, see you later guys. Peace.